HGTV makes remodeling look so easy, but I am here to tell you it is not. And that's why we are here looking at my remodel in Red Rock Country Club to give you a progress check on what's been going on. We finally got our county permits. So they have been underway with all of the renovations and they're moving really fast. Right now, we are waiting for the county inspector to approve all of the framing that they had to do for doors and windows and as well as rough plumbing. So I'm going to take you around and kind of show you what's been going on. Let's first start here at the entryway. If you remember, I wanted to remove all of this stone, which has now been removed and we were going to change this arched entryway into a more squared off, more modern looked entryway with a nice heavy iron gate that will be able to be opened and unlocked from the inside, making this courtyard super safe and secure. Let's go inside and check out what else has been done. Here you can see they've removed a lot of the windows. I did decide to go ahead and replace all of the windows I wasn't going to do it. Um, it had been discussed a few times about the energy efficiency and such, but what really made me change out the windows was the fact that I want all of my surrounds to the windows and doors to be black. And the only way to do that was to replace all of the windows. So I always talk about how when you're remodeling something, you come across some extra expenses or surprise expenses that you didn't think were gonna happen, well, my windows are one of them, and there are more. I'll talk about those as we go through the house, but replacing all the windows is definitely an extra expense that I didn't account for, but I'm glad that I left some room in my budget. Okay, so as we approach the entrance, you can see here we did change out these round circular pillars they're squared off they'll be covered with stucco and just again creating a more modern look to an older traditional style home here you can see we opened up this wall we're going to go ahead and just enter the house here because we don't even need to use the front door anymore so we're going to go ahead and come through this room you can see where we added about a foot of space into this room um, making it have uh, some more space. The secondary rooms in this house were rather small, so I had to do whatever I could to get a little bit of extra space. Something else we did in this closet was we squared it off to create some more space. And I can't wait to share with you the finish work that we did, because this is not going to be an average closet. I don't know if I mentioned it last time, but what I did was I had a mill worker make a custom closet out of this. So it will look like a cabinet or more of a wardrobe with drawers, shelving and hang space behind some nice pretty um, wood doors. So that's definitely underway. And we've, we actually also brought the wall out a little bit more to create some more depth here. So that's going along really well. As we come through this, this part of the house, um, you can see here this secondary bedroom as well. Um, actually, let's just walk in there so I can kind of show you some of the things we did in here to create a larger closet space. So here we went ahead and added again another about a foot of bedroom space, but in here, this is the closet where we made the powder room a little smaller and extended this closet, making it a nice walk-in closet. As you can see here, I, the closet would have stopped right here and it would have been really cumbersome um, to get these clothes on this side, but I made it a little deeper by extending about a foot and a half here making it a lot easier to access and use this closet efficiently. And this closet will have a barn door on it so that you can walk in all the way and access things easy and without interrupting the space in the room. The bathroom doesn't have much going on, so we'll skip that for now and move on to show you some of the other things in the house that have been done. They've been doing uh, some framing for uh, the new doors that we're putting in and the windows as well. But one of the biggest features I wanted to point out here, if you remember, I wanted to open this room up. Right here was a wall where I'm standing. 
If you remember, it was a shear wall and shear walls can't be removed, but they can be moved. So we opened up this room and I'm so pleased with how it turned out. We moved that shear wall from here to over here, which really opens up the space as you come into the home. And once the door is put in, the big glass slider, this space will look really big, open, and pretty. Um, and again, I'm so excited about the windows above. They're all framed out to be squared off. They removed all those oval or arched windows and started the framing process to put in the new ones. So I'm super excited about that. This is one of the places that actually we're waiting on the county inspector to approve and it's where they added this beam. They needed to um, have an engineer uh, create a plan for them to support this wall now that we move the shear wall. And so this framing needs to be approved as well as the framing around this door because what used to just hold windows is now going to hold a very heavy glass slider. So as you can see, there's framing already done and we're probably only about three weeks past getting our county and our permits. So we're doing really good. I'm really shocked on how well we're doing with timing. But as I've mentioned before, hiring the right contractor is huge when you're doing a remodel. I'm so impressed with how professional he's handled everything. As you can see throughout the house, he's got plans on walls in different rooms, notes to the different contractors and subcontractors that will be working in here and have been working in here. And it's just really coming along nicely, speed wise and finish wise. Something else we've been working on is all the rough plumbing. Um, let me take you in this this bathroom, one of the problems we had when we made this bathroom a little smaller to make that closet bigger is because we removed the wall right in front of the bathroom, you would essentially be opening the bathroom door and could possibly accidentally see someone sitting on the toilet. So we had the um, contractor move the plumbing over, I'd probably say about two feet. So that's been done here. Again, has to be approved by the county inspector as well. Let's go ahead and move on into the kitchen right now because there's a lot of stuff that has to get approved in here too. I don't know if you remember from the last video, um, the island was kind of turned around. Um, the sink was here. The stove was behind me and I was changing all that. So now you can see where the sink used to be, they've added some plumbing here so that my sink can go on this side of the island to take advantage of the views. Also, we changed the gas line from over here where the stove was because I'm moving the stove over here. So they had to move the gas line and that's been done again, waiting for county inspection. More framing over here. If you remember, we're changing out the fireplace from the old gas fireplace um, that square to the more linear modern fireplace. And as you can see the framing for that and the finish work um, for the wood shelves, the mill work on the sides has also been done. So as, as soon as the approvals come, you'll see more um, design work being done in this house and we'll be videoing that and bringing it to you soon. So something else that I wanna point out, my huge thing in this house, this big giant double glass sliding door that will allow this home to take full advantage of the gorgeous view of the golf course that it sits on. Also, just like the door in the living room, these have been framed out and they're ready for approval by the inspector so that they can start the installation of doors. Something I wanted to point out, we talked a little bit about it um, on my last video, and I just talked about it, but all the different things that actually come up, surprises along the way during a remodel. And one of those surprises is actually outside with the concrete around the pool and that just kind of um, the flow from the inside to the outside. And I'm gonna share with you some things that surprises that really came up and surprised me, but I think we found a solution that I'm really happy with. Before we move on to the rest of the house, 
I'm Lisa Lopez and I'm a real estate consultant in the Las Vegas area and I specialize in luxury real estate. I was born and raised here and I have a passion of helping busy families seamlessly and painlessly reach all of their real estate goals. For more videos about Las Vegas and real estate, be sure you subscribe to my channel. So a few things out here that we had to quickly change our uh, perspective on. So I wanted to have a zero uh, level or zero grade exit of the house from these sliders. But because of flood drainage, my contractor said it just would not work and I could actually cause a problem with water intrusion into the house. So together with him, me, and my designer, Monica, we went back and forth, and I finally came up with a solution that I really liked, which was we have to leave a small step, just like a threshold of any sort when you walk out of the house. So because of that, I didn't want to step down and then step back up right away. So I came up with the idea to take all the concrete out around the pool only leaving the very edge of the pool because right here where I'm standing because I actually had a pool design like this in a house before and it actually won a Better Homes and Gardens Award and it was on HGTV and I thought about it while I was standing here with the contractor and my designer and I said why can't we do it that way so all of this concrete that I'm standing on will be busted out as you can see there taking it out over there and it will just come up to it'll start a step right about here to step into the pool so I'm very happy with the solution we came up with I still wish I could have done the zero edge but I think this is a really good solution and it's still gonna create a nice sweeping look when you're looking out those glass doors. Another thing we had to figure out was that fire pit over here. I decided I'm going to go ahead and keep the fire pit. I was going to get rid of it, um, but I decided to change it out from the squared, less modern, more traditional fire pit to a very nice rectangular modern fire pit because I thought it would just be amazing to sit out here and look at these views next to a fire pit either drinking wine or making s'mores or whatever, but a fire pit always brings nice warmth and peace and relaxation to sitting outside. So I decided to go ahead and keep it. The third thing we decided to do was I wanted to get rid of the lattice patio covers that I had back here because I thought they looked very dated and rather cheap for the level of home that this is. So I'm going to go ahead and have them build out a um, frame and stucco with tile roof patio cover that matches the rest of the house. I just thought we can't skimp on it. We got to finish it. And it's, it's even though it's easy to forget some of these things in the outside, I just thought it would really um, add that extra special touch to the backyard. So we will have a full length patio cover across this door as well as um, sorry, it's really windy here in Vegas today. <laughs> um, but as well as over this bar right here, I thought it was important because we'll also have an outdoor kitchen that we planned just recently right outside this window as well. So having those two patio covers, I think will be very beneficial to ha to the house and add a lot of use out of the backyard. So let's move on to the primary and see what's been going on there. I was here not too long ago and we were doing a lot of the rough plumbing planning so that they could go ahead and put everything together and that was a lot of fun but I'm going to kind of go through exactly what we did. Um, let's talk about this bedroom first though. So I'm really excited about this part because I really think it just made a huge difference. I don't know if I've mentioned before but sometimes some of the smallest changes can make a big difference to a room. And I'm really pleased with this. Um, if you remember, there was a rounded like rotunda entrance here to this primary. Well, they took it out. They didn't think they were going to be able to take out one of the sides, which I'm so glad they figured out how to do because it really opens up this room and just creates a, a nicer flow to it. 
I'm really pleased as well with the new framing for the niche for the linear fireplace and for the flat screen TV. I think it turned out well. It's gonna look gorgeous when it's done and all the millwork is done. Um, you can see they took out all the glass block windows here in the bedroom. So I'd love to know, what would you guys add to this room if you were me? Let me know in the comments below. And as we enter into the bathroom and closet area, you'll see here, we did go ahead and expand this side of the closet, but not this side. We didn't have the space to do it, so we did it on this side. But in order to do that, we also had to move the toilet in this bathroom as well, which that rough plumbing has been done. They moved it about three feet behind me and um, that toilet room will be a little bit smaller, but it allowed more room for the closet, which I think is more important than water closet space. You don't spend much time in the water closet, at least I hope you don't. Um, so I like to spend more time in my closet and I'm really pleased with the extra space that came with the changes we did. As we move forward, you'll see we took out the vanity. This is going to be, I apologize for the noise, they're back there um, changing out the dumpster because it's really full right now with all the work they've been doing. So here we'll have the nice like purse bag display and um, some jewelry drawers and a dressing area, which I think is gonna look really pretty when we're done. This is the big one though. This was a very big change here. This was the shower, which had a wall between it and a giant tub. It had a huge tub with like a landing space here, probably from the wall to about here was a landing space. So what we did was one of my very favorite design trends that you're seeing in the luxury space is where you open up one area and you create a shower and bathtub area. It's all tiled, it can all be drained. This will have shower on this side and tub on this side where you can see we did have to move the bathtub drain about three and a half feet this direction because I'm gonna have a pedestal tub floating this way. And they built in the nice little bench, which they accidentally added in these posts, but this will be a little cubby to hide bath salts, um, a towel or two, some shampoo, something you may need. Um, within reach of being in the bathtub. So you'll have the nice shelf as well as a little open cubby area too. And I made sure when I was planning this, this is the benefit of doing a remodel that's custom, I made sure there was plenty of space to clean around the tub on the floor because I didn't want it to be too tight to the wall here that I'm talking about because that can cause a problem as well. I hate areas that are unreachable and they just, the dirt just kind of collects and um, it just makes it harder to, to keep clean. Another thing we had to do, because I was very adamant that we had two shower heads in here, I had already had it planned out to have two shower heads, a rain head and body sprayers, which once I got into this space, I realized was too much. If I had body sprayers on the wall, they would go this way and I'm afraid they're gonna jet out way past the glass, which will end right about here and hit the bathtub. So I did go ahead and do away with the body sprayers, but there will be a rain head right about here. And as you can see, I literally had to stand in this shower space with my designer together and pretend we were taking a shower so that we could make sure there was enough elbow room and we wouldn't be bumping into each other. And it did require us to move the current shower head over, even just, I think we moved it maybe eight inches over to the left here and about eight inches to the left over here as well. But it really just helped with having enough elbow room. And I think it's really important when you're doing remodels or you're building a custom home 
These are the things you want to pay attention to. You don't want to get in your shower once you've already paid all that money to complete it and realize you have no room to have two people in the shower at the same time. Or when you turn on the body sprayers you turned on are spraying so far out that it's creating more of a problem every time you use them than the convenience of having them. So something really important, make sure you're testing out your spaces, especially if you have the opportunity to customize everything, why not take full advantage of it and test it out and have it done the right way the first time. I think that's about it in here. Maybe we should go check on the casita and see what's going on in there. I haven't been in there in quite a while. Okay, so we made it to the casita. Not too much has happened in here because we weren't really doing a whole lot. We are remodeling the bathroom, but there wasn't really much plumbing being moved. Um, I'm trying to check. Yeah, not much plumbing being moved in here. The majority of it is finish work and just changing out the toilet and the shower surrounds and stuff. So not much done there. Um, they did reframe this opening though, which will provide the closet space for this room. Again, this will be just like the um, secondary bedroom downstairs where the mill worker is going to make a nice um, like wardrobe like thing. It will just look like a nice pretty wooden cabinet that will have hang space and drawer space as well. Something else I'll just point out, our electrician is here. We are changing out. Um, we're adding can lights to every room. We are changing out the old can lights to newer can lights. And um, he's also adding some custom electrical sp spots that I wanted in there as well. Something I did have him add, and I haven't talked much about, but I think it's super important in a luxury home is having electrical outlets in your primary closet. It really helps out with ironing and anything else that you might need power, vacuuming. Um, it's something that I think is overlooked a lot, but once you have it, you'll realize just how convenient it really is. For more videos about luxury living and home ownership in Las Vegas, make sure you subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified every time I drop a new video. Thanks so much and I'll see you on the next one.